Hi, my name is Richard Keller, and I'm going to demo uh, Milestone 7 of the game Overclock. It's a bit late, so sorry if I'm speaking a little bit quietly. I'll make sure I speak into the microphone, but... Um, okay, so here we go. Uh, the menus and things still look the same, although I want to uh, update these probably with the next milestone to make them fit the rest of the theme that we'll uh, see soon. I'll select level 1 here. Um, three items that I worked on this uh, milestone were to make a more consistent theme, and that's true aside from these menus, what we've been through here. Um, there's still a few items to clean up aside from the menus, but they're very small items. Um, and then make variable rates for uh, enemies, uh, for tough enemies, so that... Uh, regular bullets don't affect them as much and uh, the player uh, kind of relies on the red power converter to uh, effectively take down the t more tough enemies and uh, the last one was to create an in-game uh, menu, info menu, similar to uh, the almanac from Plants for Zombies. I've called it a codex for this game, it can be renamed. Uh, but as you can see it looks very different now the tiles have been replaced and organized, um, and the enemies uh, are different. These characters, um, uh, different animations, look much different. Let's see if I can get them. Oh, something you can't see when you're holding is that when you're dragging, I have them sort of wiggle just by playing the run animation really quickly. Not sure how well it looks. Um, no, I can't really see it as I'm holding my thumb down to drag the enemies. Um, also, you can see on the left-hand side here, I've updated some of the icons. None of them really stick out. I'm not sure if the consistent theme is a good idea. Um, maybe some of them should stick out. This uh, Two of the buttons are tappable, and the gear one is not. So I'm not sure if that um, needs to stand out to the player anymore. Let's do this. This first level is really, really easy, and I adjusted the time of the level so it, you can see the runners almost across. That's one of the items that I need to wrap up still. Uh, anyway, this blocker is here. He sits a little bit to the left and does not melee yet, but uh, he will. I chose him because he has that little bay uh, bayonet, bayonetta on the, uh, on the end of his sword there. Um, none of the other mech-type uh, uh, characters from uh, that sprite pack kind of fit something. All of them looked like they had guns, and this was the only one that had a knife. It came with the aliens pack, so I figured those two go together. Um, okay, so let's tap this and go to level two. And I'll demo uh, some of the other things. Um, let's see. So first of all, let's do the menu, I suppose. So the menu, as you can see in the top right, uh, pauses the game. Everything behind it should be paused. I did uh, a few more complex tests, but that's a part of this feature. Um, something that I haven't done with this, this uh, codex menu is make it scale with the screen size. So when you see me play it in the simulator later, uh, on the uh, Unity player, it'll look like it's a much different size, so that's something I didn't have time to do tonight, but we'll do that in the future. Um, and just tapping these icons here at the bottom will give you different information about uh, the different hero types. Uh, by you tap heroes there, we're already on the heroes tab. If you go to enemies over here, you can read about the enemies as well. So, um, Hopefully that's uh, helpful and, and hopefully uh, sticks out enough to the players that they'll be able to grab some uh, information or just pause it in the middle of the game and, and think about their strategy. Uh, yeah. So you can either you can close the menu by pressing this minus, which I pressed on the menu there, or just by tapping this info button again on the left. Uh, the back button up here still works when the info button uh, or the info menu is open and it resets properly. I had a bug earlier where we get stuck and not load the next level but that's all fixed now. Um, last thing to sort of demo is the tough enemies. 
Let's see if I can get him on level three, actually. Um, oh, you know what? I should get... I'm sorry about that. I should get all the enemies out so that you can uh, take a look at what's available. Um, I, put a, I spent uh, quite a bit of time putting this all together, uh, this level. Mm, kind of happy with the way it turned out. Um, I know that this build bar is still there on the left. I'm, I have that plan to take out on Milestone 9. Um, so that's uh, still something that I've not forgotten. I've just uh, pushed that into Milestone 9 um, so that I can implement the menus dragging and tapping and selecting because that would take, I think, a little bit of work from what I have now. Um, these gears, I'm not sure if I want to keep them. Uh, there's another orb looking thing that I get from the aliens. I thought that might make more sense for the aliens to drop. Um, that and since I'm not using the mechs per se, oh boy. Uh, here we go. So I'm not sure if you could tell, but uh, you, you definitely, um, especially for the blue ones here, and the pink ones are the tougher enemies. You can't, you're not really making a difference with just the one. But if you combine it with the power uh, power converter there, it makes quite a bit of difference. So there you go. I was able to demo that. Let's get a few more of these guys out of here. Yikes. Mm -hmm. Okay, as is happens sometimes, uh, recently I get caught up playing and forget to demo things. So that red worm that just died on the top um, is the new ice resistant enemy. Um, I picked him basically because he was a, a bit different um, and uh, he was red. This are, here he comes again on this fourth row here. Um, those are really the only reasons I, I picked him. Uh, the attack is a bit weird. Um, they don't. The aliens don't really have an attack animation. So, um, as you can see, they just do their walk animation faster. Most of them. The the red worm looking thing has an attack. So this line uh, kind of makes sense because what else would it do really? It just kind of pulses. Um, but the the sprinters, um, they don't really do anything other than. Uh, you know, walk a bit faster. Let me see if I can get one of these red guys to attack. So that looks that looks better. Ooh, got knocked out there. Um, so these gears, uh, this wind lose, which is about that, is going to be updated as well. And that little uh, little guy running across the top will be updated. Um, hopefully next milestone, if not the milestone after. Um, okay, so let's go into the code a little bit. I think I've demoed everything I wanted to. Um, okay, thanks. Okay, so here we are looking at the uh, the Unity editor. Um, I'll just play again. Uh, yikes, that is not correct at all. There we go. Um, just to show you the current issue that I'll I'll write an issue for. Oh. Huh. Perhaps it's not an issue after all. Disregard that. Um, anyway, so something else I forgot to mention is that I need to still uh, work on my audio. I haven't been including audio in this because of the way I've been casting, but some of it doesn't make sense. Uh, it's quite outdated from like milestone one and two, so I need to go through that again as well. Um, so let's just go over here. Look at the info canvas. You can see I just, uh, basically for this I have a bunch of them laid out instead of trying to modify the text and, text and images for a bunch of things, I just show and hide groups of things because it was a lot quicker to do. I could uh, repeat a lot of it and uh, the code is much, much simpler uh, to do it this way. I just found it to be overall much easier. Um, okay, so... Uh, so you can see on the right hand side here, uh, power details is now showing up and now trooper will be when I click that. So they're all basically repeated. Um, 
enemy tabs is now lit up. So um, the code for that is it's a menu script. So I have all these details. Whenever I click one of the little icons, I hide all of them and then show only the one that I've selected. Um, and then same sort of thing here with the uh, heroes and enemies tab. Um, cool. InfoScript works this way. It's very simple as well. Um, so when you tap the info button or the minus button, when the uh, so when you tap the info button, the toggle info is called. Uh, and if you tap the minus button or the minimize button from the menu, um, you get this hide info, which is basically setting the new, just flipping the boolean to where you want it to be and then updating. So uh, info canvas here, uh, let's see what I have. So first thing I do is I turn off the time scale so no animations play anymore. That's just unity wide time is not updating any longer. Uh, for the rest of these, I'm sending a message to every single game object to say pause game. So not every uh, game object implements this. So I, you know, I put the qualifier don't require a receiver. So if it doesn't implement it, it's fine. It just ignores that. Um, and then each script kind of handles it in their own way. So the base hero script, for example, um, catches these on pause, on pause game and on resume. We're going to flip this boolean. And then, you know, we're not going to do any updates if we're paused. Uh, that's basically as complex as it gets, but there's a lot of uh, little things I had to do in scripts just to make that work. Thankfully, it was a pretty, you know, overall a pretty easy solution. Uh, it didn't take me that much time. I was worried that it might for a bit because I hadn't, hadn't implemented pause uh, with Unity yet before. So, um, yeah, wasn't so bad. Um, the enemy themselves. So here's the code for the enemies not taking as much damage. So if they're a fast strong or just regular strong, they take half damage if it's a basic bullet type. So if it's basic or if it's basic ice, which is just the regular size, not large, heavy, heavy ice, uh, they take half the damage. Um, yeah, so that was basically it. The rest of it was uh, updating um, the animations. I got a bit more sophisticated, right? Well, not sophisticated, maybe complicated, with uh, the trooper or the gunner, which I'm calling trooper now. Um, he has uh, a different idle state, so when the an enemy is ahead, he's holding his gun aimed, and when one's when an enemy is not ahead, it's kind of uh, you know, pointed downwards in a resting position. I can demo that real quick. Um, but that's just kind of handled here. So it says idle, and then, uh, you know, when we tell it to idle, when we're dragging, we do this quick one. If we're not dragging, we say idle. Um, and here we're forcing it to be false, but uh, it gets figured out later further in the update function. Um, and then it determines those two states. I think that's all the code I wanted to show. Um, I'm, I might be adding uh, a few more things to the next milestone. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I think this menu could maybe be a bit larger. Um, we'll play with that and see, uh, you know, maybe just out to here a little bit, not covering up too much. But um, let's see if I can demo. Uh, the states real quick for you of this. I do like this wiggle. I know it's just them running and the uh, so rate, but um, the sorry the commando does this as well. Um, I thought it was something that, uh, that was kind of fun and quirky. So when he's resting here, uh, he's there's no enemy ahead of him in this row, so the gun is down, and this it's hard to tell with the shooting animation. So I'll, Take him out real quick. Um, that he's aiming and not, it's not just like a looping shooting animation. Uh, so they hold it there for a second, and then they both at different times went to rest. Um, so it's cool, it looks a, a bit more uh, accurate, it looks a bit nicer. Uh, overall, I'm, I'm a lot happier with how this looks now. 
Um, I'd like to do the menus and things, but I know there are some other uh, features I need to implement as well. Uh, that'll, I'll wrap it up now because the video is getting kind of long, but um, this is Milestone 7 again, and uh, I look forward to the feedback. So thanks.